We're going to review several episodes of Insanity in the 90 Day Fiancé franchise, starting with Vanya and Bojo, who appears to not be attracted to her at all, and his ex-girlfriend might have something to do with it, but he seems like a Neanderthal and like she's way out of his league. Here I am finally able to see him. Usually, a guy will give you a bouquet of flowers that ends up dying, and he gave me a plant because he knows that's what I love, and it was just so special. Vanya is a fashionista, she's a belly dancer, and she's also wonderful at cooking. She's very beautiful. They share the same culture and the same language, but I have thought long and hard, why is he so not into her? And I think that he's probably looking for a green card, and this is very common when it comes to Eastern European or Russian men. I just encountered somebody here temporarily on a visa who told me straight up he's looking for somebody to pay $50,000 thousand dollars so that he can get his papers and go their separate ways and I just think that's totally disgusting and it's very clear that Bojo already has somebody in mind and he already left her once so there has to be something else that he's looking to gain from this and that's really all that comes to mind for me but it's disgusting and low. Oh we are just nice friends. <laughs> Not. Why would I be coming all the way from Orlando here for a friend? I'm kidding, we are married, my ring is in the car. What a douchebag. He's so cruel and so insensitive and he's really got nothing to offer for such an inflated sense of ego that he has. He said that, you know, we're just friends, but this is a lot more than that. This is pursuing a potential forever connection. Vanya did mention that she's been single for six years and typically when a person waits so long it's because they have standards and they're truly looking for the right one and they don't want to get caught up in just dating Mr. Wrong over and over so it's pretty sad to have such terrible luck after such a long period of time of self-reflection. Then we got to see Matilda and Niles, and the more that I watch these two, I feel that she wants him for his money because what they quoted for the knocking ceremony did not seem accurate to me, that it would cost $250, and then there was the bizarre moment with the barber who said that the family would curse them, it's like, huh? And then Niles didn't like her living situation and was extremely rude about it, very typical American behavior. This is not how human beings are supposed to live. It's no more fast. I know. Says, this is what we can afford for now. On one hand, it's really hard to judge her because I don't think that any of us can imagine this level of poverty. It's practically like they have no walls and they're living on dirt, but it seems that Niles has upset her, so he should probably watch his back because she does seem to be rather volatile and temperamental. I know a lot of people have mixed emotions, so I'm very curious, do you guys think she's using him or she's not? My oh my. Now is too blunt. I think that's part of it, autism, but I don't like it. Next up, we had Brian and Ingrid, and I literally hate Brian. He's so annoying to me. First, he wouldn't respect her boundaries when she wanted alone time. Then he was pressuring her physically into doing things she didn't want to do. And then her mother made it extremely clear that she doesn't like him. And mom always knows best. She probably got the bad vibe. And I couldn't help but think of the beginning scenes where he's talking about Viagra. We haven't talked about nothing like Viagra and all that other stuff. Because you should never tell them. My man. First impressions my of man. everything. Brian is creepy, old, crusty, and dusty. He thinks he's like Romeo, but he's truly vile as a human being. He just massively gives me the ick, and I think everyone else feels that way. I put a Viagra under a pillow. I put a Viagra under the alarm clock. I put a Viagra in the room. Because <laughs> you never know. Acredito que até o momento vocês não acasalaram. I wonder if anybody else got the sense that her friends were sort of pimping her out. I know that people move faster in Brazil per Jess and Colt, but still, it was a bit much. Aprovou. Brian gets his hopes up and pressures her to put his mouth on her, which is just a lot. I personally would not be cool with that happening right away. Then he storms out because he didn't get his way like some man-child that he is. 
I'm hoping that tonight will be finally the night that we get to the intimate level of our relationship. Brian should know a little bit more about consent at his age and then he got advice from his LGBT sister who stated that a woman would not want that level of proximity of somebody's face and their privates and it's like how does he not know this he's your typical incel kind of nice guy weirdo after the cameras left ingrid made it clear that she was ready to have sex but i didn't have a condom so i decided to offer oral sex once i went to go kiss her stomach she basically hand in the face like nope stop but for her to shut everything down and and end the way it did it hurt me it hurt me I am so sick of seeing this guy's cringe crying face and it's not rocket science that a woman can refuse at any point and it's really no wonder that he's had so many failed marriages typically if you encounter the same problems over and over with people you have to take a look at yourself because clearly brian is not all that because when you get in a situation you might be on the couch and long from that viagra like oh Ingrid's mom was not shy at all about painting a picture of how much she doesn't like him. And it was so funny because it was almost like she was haunting them in a sense in the scenes you could see her shadow. Mas pelo menos tá comendo comigo. Obrigado. Não, eu não, por para mim eu não aceito nem o pai dela. Tipo nenhum. Ele tá na cadeira de rodas? Não, não isso eu tenho preconceito, não tem nada a ver, não. Mas o que, que ela vai arrumar o outro lado, outro país para casar? This woman is so wise and she doesn't even know about Brian's compulsive lying habit. Lying about everything from his age to his past. It's all a facade. 54. É a minha idade, meu. Que isso? Tô com 51. Hã? Eu? 51? Você não sabia a minha idade? Praia 51? Tá louca. Hein? Praia, você sempre falou pra mim que era 45. Menina, então você já mentiu tá... a sua idade pra mim. I actually think that men like him who lie about everything are extremely unsafe and he definitely has a past and a lot of baggage. I would not be surprised if her instincts were correct that he is still engaging in shady things because it seems like he never learned how to be honest as a person. And speaking of liars, that's not the only person this season. Tiger Lily is also lying about everything it seems like. Okay, maybe not in the same sense that Brian is lying, but she sort of lies to herself about her identity and who she is. She's had so much plastic surgery that she's unrecognizable and she believes that she's gonna change a Muslim man and that they're gonna have an egalitarian relationship. She has put Shekinah to shame with how many alterations she's done to her body. I mean, she was truly good looking before. She's half Japanese and I quite liked her Old look and they got into the fact that Adnan apparently does have money and he did pay for the wedding which is an interesting twist that I would have never seen coming I don't think that he has them from all these businesses I think it's probably from his family but their plotline is so boring it's the same typical American not understanding another culture he planned everything he had you know money from before and he's you know successful in jordan he probably has like four or five businesses it's actually really unfortunate to me that she has erased some of her heritage because one of my favorite types of people in the world that i find most aesthetically beautiful are the half Asian or quarter Asian person. I've actually dated a few people like that. I just think that the combination is really striking and she looked really nice before but she's a very superficial person. I know a lot of people are annoyed at the way that she talks. Then things got very dark when it came to Lauren and Faith because I knew that Lauren had things and quirks about himself like his preferences and he reveals how he likes to do things and that makes me question the logistics of how he actually caught an illness. Kissing energy? Mm-hmm. Hmm? We can't kiss. Why can't you kiss? I have gonorrhea. Gonorrhea? It's a sexually transmitted disease. 
Lauren reveals that he does not use the Peter, rather he would accept the Peter in the bedroom. So that makes me think I'm not a medical professional, but the people that he must be encountering must be pretty nasty and pretty rank and diseased because I think it would be pretty difficult to get it. I'm gonna kiss your friend. I mean, oh my god, friend! You're so lonely! Lauren picks the most inopportune times for a nightmarish revelation that nobody in their right mind wants to hear. No, I usually bottom. I don't bottom. My penis, I don't use it like in the bedroom. I actually really felt for Faith because even though she tries to make a joke, she's clearly very disgusted by this and it was not what she was anticipating. Honestly, I didn't I wasn't really that shocked by it. Sorry to say bottom. You're bottom and bottom. No. <laughs> Nganga tayo parehas, girl. Waiting tayo. Waiting for an hour and there's nothing happening. If that's what you like, I can be top. I can do both. What a lame attempt to dangle the carrot. I can't say that I'm surprised though because this man is into drag and he's very effeminate. I don't think he's even that into trans women. I honestly think that he's grappling with something a little bit deeper here and I think he's probably mostly into men but it's not my place to say his sexuality or anything like that. I'm curious what you guys think about this. With Chitty and Renee, she continues to escalate her psychotic behavior, directing her anger at the sister, and apparently she has been hunting for other blind men. This is not her first ever, so the spiritual talk just makes it that much scarier, but it gets to a point where everybody's just fed up because she truly scares them. My feelings towards her is not just um, a, fish, a, a feeling of affection, but also a feeling of compassion. Chitty channels a little bit of codependency and gives in to her manipulation, saying he has to take care of her. I, I promised her that I will always be there for yeah. her and his love. That wouldn't deny him that. Despite the fact that Renee irrationally targets the sister continuously asking her why she's angry, why does she hate her, she demonstrates her sense of character by letting us know that she does want Chitty to be happy and she's not going to stand in the way. And that truly really touched me because she put aside everything that she thought and her own fears. It was very kind and loving. But I won't stand in the way. Why do you look so angry? I'm not angry. Renee has serious problems and anything seems to set her off. You can just see her brain going completely haywire and no matter what has happened between them or what promises weren't kept, I don't think that anything is warranted for the way that she treats him and how vulnerable he already is with his disability. Throughout this whole time, you've been looking real angry. Yeah. The non-existent war that Renee creates in her mind leaves Chitty no option but to choose his family because they're the ones that have been there for him his whole life. She's not 100%. <laughs> Despite her behavior, mental illness is a real issue and she seems to fetishize some kind of power imbalance dynamic when it comes to those that have disabilities or are in a more disadvantaged position than her as evidenced by another blind man that she apparently was with and was about to film with when she chose to be with Chitty. I just hope that she reflects on herself after this. Ever one time did you ever say, I'm in love with you? Why do you have me here? I wasted a lot of money. Don't say no. Oh, respect me. I can't imagine the sensory overload that he must have felt being screamed at like that. It was completely unacceptable of her. And her little attempts at buying lingerie that he can't view for his pleasure fell flat because finally he did decide that everybody in his life doesn't like her. He doesn't feel safe or like she's somebody that could guide him through life. So he speaks to his friend and his friend tells him, bro, save yourself. This will not end well for either either of you and you need to go your separate ways. She has to move on for the both of you is good, especially you. He decides that he still wants closure from her and wants to give her gifts and calls her babe, which isn't received very well at all. I'll tell you uh, what's this? Oh, thank you. 
Honestly, I find Chitty to be a very sweet person. He's very innocent and childlike, and I don't think that he deserved to be called a scammer. And all the things she was saying to him was just completely horrible. His sister had to wait outside just to make sure that things didn't escalate. I think these people were truly afraid of her. The only time I have ever enjoyed this relationship was when we, when we newly met. And you asked me to marry you? You are the biggest scammer I've ever come across wait, and one of the worst. Wait, wait. You learned to shut your mouth, okay? Wait, this, this is, is the reason. reason. See, this I, can, is I can't don't continue know, again. Okay? I don't need to It's hear over. You. I'm tired. It's over. Somebody please put this woman in a straight jacket or something because she's totally unhinged and I hope that this gave him the closure that it's never going to work and no matter what, it's going to be the same cycle. He deserves better than that. He's a sweet, adorable guy and I hope he finds love. And speaking of chaos, Vea is one person that I don't like because she is always trying to cause issues and the betrayal of bringing her ex is unacceptable to me regardless of her so-called traumas of having a miscarriage or losing a family member. That has happened to a lot of us and that doesn't give her the right to hurt other people intentionally and she seems to be a very superficial person. I genuinely think that Sunny is is way too good for her. How she wanted to use her Apple Watch in order to pay the street vendor and refused to eat his food while taking photos with her ex. And I do believe that she's sleeping with her ex. But I don't want to eat it. Are you serious? Vea should have kept her trashy, redneck Jerry Springer drama with her in the United States instead of bringing it across the world. Call me sheltered, but I've just never e eaten curry before. I don't know what's even in curry. I feel like that's rude. Food is really important in my culture. The awkwardness between her and her ex makes me highly suspicious that something physical is going on and she should really let the past be in the past if she wants to ever have a healthy relationship. I know I would not be okay with being a person like her. What the f***, Vea? You f bring your Exhale, out of your mind. Don't even touch me. Go touch your ex-boyfriend. Then Sunny's friend actually drops the bomb that she would have to convert to Islam if they ever wanted to be married. And in my personal opinion, I don't think that Vea is even close to marriage because she's very immature and people that can't leave the past in the past and want to have their cake and eat it too, like having the ex around, just are not capable of the depth that it takes to be married. You're gonna get married to him. I don't think you have to change your religion to be a Muslim. He never said I had to be Muslim. I feel completely blindsided by Ali telling me that I need to be Muslim to be with Sunny. I hope that my next relationship is nothing like theirs. I think that relationships should be based on honor and respect, of which she's lacking, and she didn't seem like she had any plans to tell him until he figured it out on his own. Overall, just a train wreck of a season, and it seems to be across the board. Thank you for watching I Go By Ultra and it's been getting increasingly harder for me to get camera ready and to make videos more often. I do still care about making content and about the show so I'm trying my best. I have six months left before I actually finish my bachelor's degree in urban studies and planning and I'm working in my field right now so thank you for your patience. I'm gonna do more videos covering several episodes. Let me know what you guys thought in the comments. Comments. Love you guys. Bye.